Hi everyone, I'm Ginger Balch from In Sheep's Clothing Yarn Shop in Torrington, welcoming you to another episode of Focus on Fiber. I'm super excited to talk to you today about knitting a log cabin blanket. The project is a great use of multicolored yarns or even your stash yarns. So as you can see, this is what we call the log cabin uh, blanket. Uh, for you quilters out there, you're very familiar with log cabin. So this is our uh, knitter's version of the log cabin um, that you're so familiar with. Um, what we do with this is we start in our center here and then we pick up stitches and then we knit and we bind off and we keep picking up and the, the piece is worked this way and then around and then around. And as you can see, this is a great use of multicolored yarns, um, especially when you're, um, the ones that work the absolute best are the ones that have really long color runs, um, not so much with the shorter ones. So like this, you can see here how this yarn has bigger sections of colors. And this particular yarn happened to be the one that did this square. So you can see how the different colors worked. And what's so exciting about making this particular uh, piece and, and knitting it is that even though you're looking at your skein of yarn and you're like, okay, I can see how these colors are going, you still never quite know where the colors are going to end and what color it's going to end against. So that's just so much fun. And I will say that of a lot of the, my more recent projects of knitting, this has probably be, given me the most enjoyment. Um, the first thing is, and this is, happens to be one of the squares, I made one square too many, um, but this happens to be one of the squares. And it doesn't take much to start. Um, for this particular, the, all, the different patterns um, all work a little differently. This one happened to start with 15 stitches and then you work for 20 rows. Um, so this would be my center right here. Now I'm using heavier yarn for this, um, this project right now, um, just so that you can see how it's working up. Um, and also the other thing that's really great about this is you can, with this particular project, I pretty much had different color skeins of yarn. One skein of yarn will give you pretty much one square and you'll have a little bit of yarn left over. Um, for example, when I was doing this square right here, I happen to have an odd, an odd skein, about three quarters of a skein of something else. And I knew looking at it that it was going to be a very dark skein, uh, a very dark square. So what I did was I had a little bit of yarn left over from this one here. You can see it was the red. So I started my square with that. So it gave it a little pop of color. Uh, and brightened up what would have been otherwise a pretty dark square. Uh, but that's pretty much what you get left over from one square. So this happened to be what you like a nine patch uh, afghan. Um, so it took me nine square, nine balls of yarn to make it. And then you can see that what I did was outlined it with a solid yarn. And I happened to use this color here. Now, if you had used something like the black, you would get more of like kind of like that Amish look for a quilt. Um, it would make your colors really stand out more. Um, I just decided for, for what I was doing, I wanted a little bit more subtle, um, subtle look. So, um, but the other option that you could do besides doing one color for each square and giving you kind of like a more crazy quilt look, uh, look, um, is you could choose maybe a couple colors or maybe, you know, three or four colors and do a couple squares of each. And you could certainly, um, I've been doing a class on this, uh, particular, uh, blanket and everybody's is coming out totally different, but uh, quite a few people are making them bigger. So they're doing more like instead of three by three squares, they're doing four by five squares. Um, so they have more choice as far as how many, uh, what the colors that they want to do. Um, a, a number of people, what they've decided to do is to take one color and do the whole blanket with the one color. Because what happens, you think, oh, that sounds kind of boring. It's not. Because as you can see, like I keep going back to this square, um, it's almost kind of my favorite one, um, is depending on where you start in your 
um, your ball of yarn. Like if I started on the outside, well, I'll say that I started on the inside of this one. You're starting with your center square. So your center square is going to be red instead of this color. So that every square that you do, depending on if you start from the inside, the outside, and all the balls start in different places anyway, color-wise, each square is going to look totally different. For example, oh, oh this, is, this worked out perfectly. This, um, this is actually, this square that I have extra is actually the same ball of yarn that I used for this one. But to, because I started in a different place, the colors came out differently. So even if you use one color, every square is going to look totally different. So um, you keep it easy and just do one color way. So to start out to show you how this works is you do your little rectangle in the center. So I cast on my 15 stitches and then I worked for my 20 rows. And actually it's 40 rows, but with garter stitch you get one ridge for every row. So I have 20 ridges although I had 40 rows. Now you always want to make sure that you end on the right side. So my tail is on the right side and I'm ending right here because now that I've knit my, my 20 ridges, what I want to do is bind off. And this is where the magic happens besides the fact that my yarn is starting to change colors. So I'm going to bind off my stitches across and binding off nice and simple knit two stitches, purl the first, um, sorry, pull the first stitch over the second, then take the next stitch and pull that stitch over the stitch you just knit. And you just proceed like that all the way across. Now you don't want to do this too tightly, but you don't want it to be sloppy either. So we do this all the way across. And this is another thing about this blanket, is you will become an expert at binding off and picking up stitches. So we get to keep working until we get to the end. And it's so much fun to watch your colors change as you work because it takes something that's pretty simple and makes it a little more exciting. Okay, so now we're at our last stitch and I bind off and there we go. Now, you don't want to break it off. You're going to keep that stitch on the needle. And now at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our work and we're going to... Uh, turn it to the side. So now what we're going to do is pick up our stitches along this edge. So, and there's a couple of different ways that you can pick up that you want. You can either, what I like to do is I go through this little bump that's right here, or what you can do is go kind of in between your garter ridges. But whichever way you choose to do it, just be consistent. Just always do it the same way. So what I do is, and this is glasses time. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, you can see where I have my little bump here. I like to take my needle and go smooth this over a little bit. Just like to go through that bump and go straight through. Wrap the yarn around my needle and pull up a stitch. And then I'm going to go into the next one, pull up a stitch. Now what I want to do, because I have 20, 20 rows, I want to pick up, I want to have 20 stitches all the way along the edge here. And if you go into each ridge, that will do the trick. Right. And sometimes you might find yourself maybe off a stitch or so not a big deal. You could always, you know, take it back a little bit and maybe skip a spot. There we go. But you just want it to look like it's being picked up nice and evenly. 
and you can see now how the color that was up here, this blue, this blue multi, is now going to edge this piece. And that one might be a little close. Just gonna move it. And I don't like to go too too close to the edge because I like to have a nice, I like it to be nice and firm, and I don't want to, like I wouldn't do this. I don't want to have one, see, because that leaves a really big hole. So I don't want to go in like that. I want to go in so I have. Uh, like basically like two loops on that needle. I'll go across and I'm going to just give a count and see how close I am here. 16, 18. Okay. And then another little trick that I have, so there's 19, is I like to make sure that I get as close in the corner as possible. So I'm going to get as close in that corner and pull up my last stitch so it's it's nice and snug to the corner here. Um, because if you do that, what it does is it gives, gives you like a nice crisp corner when you're doing your blocks. And if you don't, you, see, you notice it later that it's not nice and crisp. So that's why I like to do that. Okay, so now we've picked up our stitches. So now what we're going to do, and like on this square here, so this is where we're, this is where we're at, okay? Um, so now we're working this, this piece right here. So now we're just going to knit. Now I'm not going to knit. Um, for this particular piece, you're knitting um, uh, six ridges. But we're not going to do six ridges. I'm just going to do a few so that you can um, see how this works. So I'm just going to knit across real fast here. And also another thing that I noticed because of when you pick up the way that you have to, um, if I don't go into the front of my stitch, I go into the back because otherwise my stitch gets twisted. And this takes care of it. I only just do it for this first cast on row. Or pick up row, sorry, not cast on row. So I just go across and we turn it around. And see how now we're getting that nice different color blue edging on this side. So I'm going to knit across here. And knitting these squares I liken to eating potato chips because you just can't stop at one. Um, they go very quickly. Once you get one square down, you're hooked. And you realize how easy they are and you don't have to think. You can do this in front of the TV, no problem. And the color changes just make you want to keep going and to see what's going to happen next. And some people kind of don't like the idea of like, ugh, to, to pick up stitches constantly and I'm binding off constantly. Yeah, but then you have a whole bunch that you have to knit before you get to the next section again. So it just kind of keeps you going. So what I'm going to do is we're going to make short work of this one, just so you can get the idea how this moves al along. So let's just say that I have my six garter ridges, which I don't. But see how we have the color changes now. Okay, that blue has now moved over to the side. Uh, let's just kind of take a look at where, yeah, we would have a bunch more blue. But okay, so now what I'm going to do is bind off these stitches again because and you always want to make sure that you're on the right side so here's my tail you'll also once you once you've done your first section it's very easy to know where your right and wrong is because if you flip this over see there's my pickup that's definitely not the right side so 
we know that we are on our correct side now. So we'll bind these stitches off again. And there we go. Oops, knitting. Okay. So bind off. And once you've gone all the way around, it's much easier to pick up stitches because you'll have more finished stitch edges to go into instead of your side garter stitch uh, rows. But we have a nice group of gals right now that everybody's blankets are such they're using different um, different brands of yarn so they vary because of that but then just color to color they vary so much and it's so nice to get together and have people lay out their squares and we can all look at look at them and uh, see how, how different they are and how it's funny, as you're knitting these, the square that is your favorite square is the one that you're working on at that moment. But when you go to start the next square, that one suddenly becomes your next favorite one. Okay, so now we're almost to the edge of this side. And once again, what you want to do is to leave one live stitch, okay? So see how we have our, our edge here? So now all you do is you keep turning it. And now what you'll do, this is what's a little different is, um, we cast on our 15 stitches, we knit our 20 rows. So when we came back this way, we had to pick up 20. But now because this is a short end, we're picking up 15 here, what we originally cast on, plus what we put on. So, so let's just pretend, well actually we, let's just say we did three rows, we want to pick up three stitches here. So we would pick up three stitches. So I'm going to pick up one. Actually I really don't think I even have three rows here. One, two, there we go, so we have three. But you really, again, you want to get into that corner of where your color ended. So there we go, so we've got three stitches now. And now we would proceed across and pick up our 15 stitches and then continue to knit again. So just for the heck of that, I'll just pick these up so you can see. There we go. To me, picking up stitches, I guess maybe it's because I crochet. Um, it's almost like I'm crocheting when I'm picking up stitches. Um, if you find it difficult to pick up the stitches with a knitting needle, you can always get a crochet hook and just pick them up and then put them, slide them onto your, to your knitting needle. Let's just see where we are, are here. So when we count, go to count now, I have my three stitches, now we need 15 more. So two, four, six, eight, 10, 10, 11, 12, 13, whoops, 14, and then we want to, actually, you know what, I fibbed to you. I only put on 14 stitches, I didn't put on 15. Um, I was trying to make the square just a little bit bigger so we could get through it a little faster. So I have, 15, I have 14 stitches plus the three stitches from this one. We're going to knit. Bind off on the right hand side again, leave that live stitch, turn our work again, pick up, this time it would be 20, and then knit, 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 actually it would be 20, yeah, no, that's right, it would be 20 stitches, knit, 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 leave, bind off, leave that loop again, turn again, and then pick up. And you're going to just continue in that manner all the way around. Now you can make it as big as you want. With these particular squares, what I did was I went around, went around twice. So you can see I have one log, two, 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 two. And that's how you want to end. Um, 
You could even do, and I saw this with a baby blanket that was really adorable, is that you can uh, just keep going round and round and round until the blanket or the square is as big as you want to make it. Say you want to make a pillow. Perfect. Just keep going around. Now, once you've made your squares, um, you need to put them together. And what I did here, the little trick with putting them together is you want to choose your, your uh, border color. And then what you do is you're going to have your square like this. And then once again, you're going to pick up with your border color. And the trick here is that what you do is um, you want to have your six, um, your six ridges like you have, well, yeah, you have your six, yeah, you have your six ridges, but because we're going to this, I didn't mention this to you. This is no sew. You do not have to sew any of these squares together. You do not have to sew your borders together. So what we're going to do is when we pick up and we knit our three, we're going to three, knit three garter ridges, set it aside. You have to figure out, you place out your your squares as to how you want it arranged. We're going to sew them and put them together in strips. So we'll do a strip, a strip, a strip. And we put these, these will connect our squares together to create a strip. So back to our three ridges. So we did one on this side. We take our second square, pick up our stitches, knit our three ridges, and then what you do is right sides together you take your two you take your two squares and we'll just pretend that this one is on needles and you do a three needle bind off so what that gives you is a nice neat ridge that puts both edges together without having to sew it. It's just the best trick ever. And three needle bind off is basically where you're binding the two pieces together, looping them together, and then pulling them over and it just links them together. So you do your border for your strips. And then after that, what you need to do is you can do all this on a, on a short straight needle or, you know, 16, 20 inch circular needle. That's fine. But then when you have to go to do your, um, your borders in between, you want to take both your strips. You're going to put them faces face together and you will be picking up. Well, actually first what you do, sorry, I skipped that part is you take your strip and just like we did with the square, you're going to pick up your stitches all along that, that edge for your border. Then you'll knit your three garter ridges again. Then you take your other strip and you do exactly the same thing. But you would want to use a circular, a longer circular needle to accommodate all those stitches. I found for this a 24 inch circular needle worked just great. When I did the um, around the edges, um, I might have changed to maybe a 32, but they all kind of squish down really nice, so it works well. Um, so anyway, so you just keep doing that. Just keep putting your strips together, strips together, and then once it's all together, you kind of do like the same log cabin process with the outside border, is you just pick an edge. Say this is our afghan. All our strips are put together, and that's this piece right here. What we're going to do is... From the, this is what I did was from the top. I, did, I started from the top because um, it was less stitches. I picked up, worked, okay? Um, and if you want, I think we did maybe nine garter ridges for the edge. Do those nine ridges, bind off, you have the live stitch, you turn your piece around, pick up again, work, bind off, live stitch, turn it around again and you do that all the way around until the whole piece is encased with your border color and then you just 
pull, cut off, pull it through, and then just weave it in all your ends. And that's the other great thing about this piece is you hardly have any ends at all. You really only have the end that you start with on the square and the end that you finished with on the square. So that's, so like on this particular piece, for all my squares, uh, nine squares, I only had 18 ends that I had to weave in as opposed to any number of other blankets that you could, you know, that have color work that you would have like so many ends to work in. So that was another plus, um, not having to sew, not having to weave in a ton of ends. And when you're done, you are, you're done and you have this beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece. And um, I just had this little basket here just to show you some of the great colors that some of the um, uh, people are working on. So you could do something like this. I mean, imagine a blanket that is done with all these glorious bright colors. And um, I have some people that, again, that they are using like a skein for each different one. So think about that. All these great colors that you could be working on for a blanket like this. And this happened to be done in wool because you get such great yarns that are wool that have wonderful long color runs like this. Well, I'm out of time now, and I certainly hope that I've given you the bug to get started on knitting your very own log cabin blanket. The hardest part of this project is going to be trying to figure out what color ways you want to work with. Well, till the next time, I hope that you will keep this in mind, and I hope that you will keep a focus on fiber. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.